why hello hello firstly we have a change of scenery here welcome to the northern part of my bed aka my right your left when you're looking at my previous videos i figured it was time to spice things up a little bit Brief interruption to do a quick nightstand tour in case you're wondering what is behind me in the entirety of this video. I have a diffuser and two of my favorite essential oils. This is lavender and Ilong Ilong. A loop face by a ceramicist based in LA. Her name is Lucy Michael and I'll have her linked in the description below. A candle that I hardly ever burn because I tend to diffuse essential oils more often because I really don't like fire. And on the lower level we have Busy Phillips memoir which I have not finished reading but it's really good and I intend on finishing it very soon. Another book that I started reading but I didn't finish and I want to finish soon. Bundle of Palo Santo. An incense holder by a ceramicist based in Brooklyn. Her name is Ivy and I'll have her linked in the description below too. And two more essential oils, lemon and rosemary. Secondly, if you're wondering why the thumbnail picture does not match the setting and what I'm wearing, this is the second time I have filmed this video. The first time I messed up the lighting. So hopefully this will go better. And thirdly and lastly, this is the last video in the Sweet New Year series. Every week of January, I've been posting a new video specifically targeting different New Year's resolutions. And today we're talking all about books. This video is part of the Sweet New Year series where I post a new video every week of January specifically related to common New Year's resolutions to get your new year started off right. Growing up, I was always a sensitive bookish type, and at one point averaged reading one to two books a week. These days, I don't read nearly as much, but reading more, I've only just listening to an audiobook while I make dinner, walk Aubrey, or edit pictures on the computer is an intention of mine of 2019. While I have an exponentially growing list of books to read that were either recommended to me, or an Oprah's book club, or just plain old look good because of their cool cover art, reading more might be the oldest New Year's resolution known to mankind, and while we're still in the Sweet New Year series, I figured I'd share with you six books that have made a significant impact on my life. I tend to read books in the genres of fiction, self-help, and memoir, and all these books fall into one of those categories. You are badass by Jen Sincero. Sometimes motivational self-help books are too numbers-based, dry, and cliche for my liking. What I liked about this book is Jen writes from a place of optimistic cynicism, which really resonated with me. She touches on a lot of pseudoscientific topics like the law of attraction, the Louise Hayes mind-body connection philosophy, and the subconscious without getting too far out there, and includes a bunch of inspirational stuff without getting too corny. You know when you read a piece of literature and you think to yourself, wow, that author seems like a really cool person to hang out with? That's Jen. She has a dry, sassy sarcasm that I identify with and offers digestible, practical advice on how you can get out of your head and start manifesting some of the amazing stuff you want to happen. There's a chapter called Loincloth Man and another chapter called Lead With Your Crotch. So if that doesn't intrigue you, I don't know what will. Since this book was written, Jen has also written two more books in the Badass series. Number one and number two. I have yet to read those, but those are definitely on my list for 2019. The Five Love Languages by Jerry Jerry by Gary Chapman. Even though technically the five love languages is geared towards romantic relationships, the advice in this book can really be applied to any relationship. Gary says that each of us has a primary love language. Our primary love language is the way we most frequently express and like to receive love. The five love languages are words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, acts of service, and quality time. Just like you wouldn't get too far speaking Portuguese to someone who only speaks Italian. Actually, no, that's a really bad example because those two languages are really similar. Um, try that again. What language is really different from another? Just like you wouldn't get too far speaking Italian to someone who speaks Punjabi only, challenges and misunderstandings often arise in relationships because the people are not communicating in the same love language. The key is not to convert people to our love language, but to learn to speak the love language of the other person. This book helped me understand the main reason why some relationships don't work despite honorable attempts at honest and heartfelt communication. 
The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Gretchen Rubin is a lawyer turned author, blogger, podcaster, speaker who studies human personalities and ways to harness habits to make your life happier. She developed the Four Tendencies framework, which breaks up the way humans respond to expectations into four groups or tendencies. It's very similar to the premise of the five love languages. Upholders respond readily to inner and outer expectations equally. Questioners will meet an expectation if it makes sense to them. Obligers readily meet outer expectations but have trouble meeting inner expectations. And rebels resist both outer and inner expectations. If you're curious as to what tendency you are, I've linked Gretchen's free tendency quiz in the description below. I'm a very analytical person, but I also love complex things like human personalities simplified into layman's terms. And being the narcissist I am, I love learning about my personality, so naturally I devoured this book. Now when talking to others, I'll pick up on keywords that clue me in as to what tendency they are. Knowing our own tendency and those of others helps us to devise tactics and set up situations to help us to change our habits, achieve our goals, and better engage with people around us. Honorable mentions include The Happiness Project and Better Than Before. The Happiness Project is probably Gretchen's most notable book and it's a memoir all about her own happiness journey and Better Than Before is all about habit change and is the premise of the Four Tendencies framework. She also has a podcast she does with her sister called Happier, which is one of my absolute favorites. The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. You know when you pick up a book on a whim with little to no plan or expectation and somehow it becomes one of the best books you've ever read? That was The Glass Castle for me. I won a signed copy of The Glass Castle from my local library when I was in fifth grade. I had never heard of the book, nor did I have any clue what it was about obviously because I've never heard of the book. But as I mentioned before, I was reading about one to two books a week. And when you blow through books that fast of a pace, you start to get less picky about what you read and start reading anything that falls into your lap. Before this book, I read more of your typical young adult fiction like The Princess Diaries, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and any book by Sarah Dessen. But this book really turned me on to memoirs, especially memoirs by people with dysfunctional upbringings. Jeanette wrote this book from a place of such candid honesty and vulnerability, it gave me goosebumps. I was so obsessed with reading this book. I specifically remember forcing my mom to blow dry my hair because I didn't want to take a break from reading to perform such a monotonous task. I haven't watched the movie. I tend to avoid movies based off of books that I really love because I want the characters to live on in my head just as I had imagined them. So I can't speak to how good the movie is or how good the movie was. It was out a while back. But if you liked the movie, you can comment in the comments and let me know that it was really good and maybe I'll watch it. But this book, man. If you like memoirs, even if you don't like reading memoirs, if you just like reading about people who have had dysfunctional childhoods, perverted family lives, and how they broke out of the cycle, read this book. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Saffron Foer. Back in my early blogging days, years before the conception of Pinterest, when I would spend hours upon hours posting Chuck Palahniuk quotes and overly photoshopped pictures on Tumblr, I came across the most hauntingly beautiful quote from this book, extremely loud and incredibly close. I don't remember checking this book out from the library, but I do remember staying up till 2 a.m. every morning, finishing the book until I finished all 368 pages in less than a week. The novel takes place in New York City and is a mystery centered around the real life events of 9-11 written from the perspective of a nine-year-old boy. It's a coming of age story written in a nostalgic, idealistic way that reminds me of The Perks of Being a Wallflower and The Catcher in the Rye. It has some of the most wistfully romantic quotes I've ever read that bring me to my literary knees, basking in their complete and utter dreaminess and make me not even want to attempt to write something remotely thoughtfully profound. The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This is one of the few books I read in school that I actually enjoyed. I read it in seventh grade when I was absolutely obsessed with my English teacher and fantasized about being an English teacher or author myself. The book is a memoir and is written in a series of vignettes about a girl growing up in the slums of Chicago. The book is written in a naive, sentimental style that reminds me very much of The Perks of Being a Wallflower, The Catcher in the Rye, the Outsiders, and Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. So if you liked any of those books, chances are you'll like The House on Mango Street too. I feel like this book is often overlooked, but I almost like that it's kind of under the radar because it's not highly commoditized and it still feels like a hidden gem. 
The fact that the book is short and is written in vignettes makes it very easy to go through. You could probably read it in a day or a few days. And thus concludes six books that changed my life. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below one book that changed your life. I hope you enjoyed the Sweet New Year series. Remember, January 1st is just an arbitrary date and you can really make changes whenever you want to. If you need accountability, share your intention in the comments below and we can all hold ourselves accountable. <laughs> Keep it sweet, make your own salad, and I'll see you next week not to tackle another New Year's resolution, but hopefully something that will be as equally as enjoyable. Bye!